Well, you are listening to Meeting House here on Faith Radio. It is great to welcome back to the program Kristen Hawkins. She is president of Students for Life of America, a very active pro-life organization. And today we're going to be talking about this decision that was issued recently by the U.S. Supreme Court. It has to do with a lawsuit filed by a group of pro-life doctors and individuals called the Alliance for Hippocratic Medicine filing suit against the U.S. Food and Drug Administration and the Supreme Court, as I understand it, a unanimous decision to essentially not rule, not really rule on, as it's been said, the merits of the case being really due to a technicality. In other words, it was dismissed because of a lack of standing on the part of the doctors. And so we're going to be already, and just setting that up, there are several things we want to consider here. Kristen Hawkins from Students for Life of America joining us here. Kristen, thanks for spending some time with us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Well, let's give our listeners, first of all, some background in the case. It's something we've been following, really, Mm -hmm. since the lower court decision. And that decision actually was changed at the circuit court or the appeals court level. And then going Mm -hmm. up to the U.S. Supreme Court, the oral arguments gave those in the pro-life community really some concern because it it appeared that the justices might be heading for this decision that was handed down recently. So from a, from a background standpoint, tell us about the, the history, if you would, very briefly of the case and really what's at stake there or what what is what continues to be at stake there. Sure. Well, the, well, the background, the long background of this case is that years ago, the pro-life, the American Association of Pro-Life OBGYN had filed a citizen's petition um, against the FDA and their ap- approval of chemical abortion pills. Um, be- and their, their really their, their main concern was just the lack of concern that the FDA had demonstrated for mothers um, by getting rid of the risk evaluation mitigation strategies, REMS, protecting mothers. Um, from these, the dangerous side effects of chemical abortion pills. Not only do chemical abortion pills kill babies, but they also harm mothers. That's why for years there were REMS attached to these drugs saying that, you know, a woman who takes these drugs has to first, you know, we need to ensure um, that she's not experiencing a life-threatening ectopic pregnancy. Um, and all, you know, there were other concerns as well about, um you know, her infertility, removing uh, the regulation of the drugs to say that a mother um, has to be screened, a simple blood test, make sure she does, isn't RH negative, which having the abortion and being RH negative, she's not properly treated before and after the abortion. She may never be able to carry another child to term. So these were like very simple things that even pro-choice doctors, to be honest, should be concerned about because they all say they care about women. Um, that this case originated with the FDA refusing to respond uh, to these pro-life doctors. Um, other doctors then, as the drug made its way into the market, as the Biden administration has rapidly pushed chemical abortion pills using the crisis of COVID to get rid of all the REMS, uh, we saw a lot of doctors coming forward saying, wait a minute, there's major concerns here women are being seen in emergency rooms across the country um, with severe bleeding pain pain cramps things like that and doctors aren't prepared in these emergency rooms because a lot of times the abortion facility even tells her not to tell anyone she's taken ru-46 the chemical abortion drug cocktail and so the standing question came from doctors saying we're treating patients um, this is a concern to us because we're not being properly informed what's happened, what's been tested before um, her abortion, and these emergency room doctors are being forced to step in here. That's really how the doctors filed the suit. The Supreme Court in the case said that the doctors weren't enough 
um, to to be the ones with standing. And so they've sent the case back. Now, there's been a lot of talk, though, that, you know, and if you read some of the decision uh, from more of the conservative members of the court, um, they gave a couple of pathways. And I think the pro-abortion side was very upset last week because they felt like reading the decision, while it was a temporary victory for the abortion movement, uh, those who were reading what the justices wrote, wrote are concerned that if um, the lawyers and the doctors come back uh, and address their standing questions, uh, that, that we could see a pro-life victory here. Kristen Hawkins joining us today, president of Students for Life of America, as we talk about this this decision, or some might say the non-decision by the U.S. Supreme Court really rejecting the claims by these pro-life doctors as they challenge the Food and Drug Administration. So let's talk about some of those pathways, because what I'm seeing among those in the pro-life community here since that Supreme Court decision is that this case is by no means over. So share with us sure. just a bit about what you have seen in the justices' language that might might indicate yeah. that if the standing issue is resolved, what could occur? Well, you know, one of the silver linings we saw from last week was the justices came out and said that the conscience rights of pro-life Christian professionals uh, should be protected, which is, is, you know, the exact opposite of what the Department of Health and Human Services uh, has been working towards. Um, I think that the other, you know, silver lining is, you know, we saw that Justice Brett Kavanaugh looked at standing from uh, the environmental law perspective, which is something that Students for Life Action, Students for Life America has been very engaged in the past five years, uh, really leading that forefront of the argument that these chemical abortion pills not only are they killing babies, not only are they harming women, they're actually also harming our environment. And when the FDA approved these pills back in 2000, they, they purposely um, did not ensure that their approval adhered to the Clean Water Act and the Endangered Species Act. We actually filed an amicus brief in this case detailing these potential harms to endangered species from the reckless distribution of chemical abortion pills. Um, we've sent four citizen petitions to the FDA, three of which are focused on this environmental aspect. We've had meetings with more than 10 attorneys general um, uh, in state uh, asking them to step in and combat the spread and proliferation of these chemical abortion pills are now, you know, in a lot of states being illegally sent. We saw the state of Louisiana uh, uh, take action. We saw the Arkansas Attorney General just take action on this. We've got federal legislation being introduced, state legislation. We've worked with our students to introduce in a number of states. So I, I think that, you know, while it was a temporary step back, we were obviously disappointed. I wasn't surprised by the ruling based on the oral arguments, as you mentioned earlier, Um, and I think that, uh, we still have some work to do, but ultimately I I believe we will be successful in just looking at the, you know, reckless nature as how the FDA has distributed these drugs and how the Biden administration has just been, um, you know, a puppet for the abortion industry in this battle. And let's talk just a moment here, Kristen, about this issue of standing. Basically, the Supreme Court saying that these doctors were not in a position to actually challenge this this policy by the FDA. So why was it that the that the determination was made that these doctors did not have standing? And I know it's been pointed out that perhaps women who have been harmed by these abortion pills could could come into a courtroom and actually have standing. So comment on that whole standing issue, what the Supreme Court said, and, well, who might have standing in the future? Yeah, I mean, it was clear from their ruling the justices did not want to pull the drug from the market um, based off of the concerns of a few doctors. Um, I think that was the biggest um, thing I took away reading uh, their responses. Um, I think that you're right uh, when you're talking about standing. Um, you're going to have to see women uh, who've been directly harmed by chemical abortion uh, going to the Supreme Court. 
Um, you know, TikTok, social media is sadly filled with these stories of even stories from pro-choice women um, who have come out and said, you know, I don't regret my abortion, but let me warn you, don't have this type of abortion. That's how dangerous, how painful uh, these abortions are. Women, you know, frequently will do TikTok videos and Instagram reels talking about how they felt like they were going to die alone in their bathroom, um, that the abortion facility wasn't there with them. They were ill-prepared for what the full abortion was. That's why when we're on campuses and sometimes when we have women who come up screaming, acting a rate, when we try to calm them down, what we soon find is that they're so angry and hurt because they'll pull up on their phone a picture of the baby uh, that they aborted, their child that ended up in the toilet bowl. Um, and that's, and I think that is sadly when we're talking about the Supreme Court um, and this, you know, very conservative Supreme Court, um, they, uh, I think, want to make sure uh, when they do give standing for this case that they're going to want to hear from the patients directly themselves, uh, not only uh, doctors. Kristen Hawkins, Students for Life of America, joining us today, studentsforlife.org. Kristen, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.